Hey guys, we're back with some more Switch Talk today. Now we're going to cover something that, that p people had covered probably about two or three days ago, which is an interesting revelation from Nicalis. Nicalis is uh, a publisher of a lot of games that come out, usually like 3DS and Wii U type of games, a lot of like smaller indie type of games. But Nicalis put out this tweet showing this screen, this, this picture we're seeing right here. and. First of all, it revealed some new games that, you know, we didn't realize that were even coming to the Switch. But more importantly, it showed an interesting look at the UI. And it was reported that that this screenshot showed dynamic new themes, like the Nintendo Switch will have themes. I don't think it's necessarily, what we're seeing is necessarily a theme. Now if you look closely, if you look here, basically this is the suspend screen like the original 3DS, like the the PS4, the new consoles that come out. While you're playing the game, you can return to the home screen by pressing the home button on the, the uh, right Joy-Con. What that does is it suspends the game that you're currently playing and you're taken to the screen, the home screen. Now if you notice, it says right here, it says playing, so this is the suspend screen. So I think that's why we're seeing the black, the black theme. It's I don't think it's really a theme, I think it's just what happens when you when you suspend a game so I think that's what we're actually seeing here I don't think it's indicative of an actual dark theme I think it's just this is the suspend screen this is what happens when you put it in suspend mode suspend game the screen turns black like a visual cue type of thing but interestingly enough it also shows that we can have more than one user on the switch which is always nice now I'm wondering if these users will be like if you could have two people on two separate my nintendo accounts signed in on one switch or if the main user which is shown here if that is the main my nintendo user and the extra users that are logged in are basically guests because the switch is made to be taken anywhere and to be able to play with two people anywhere like an arcade machine like your own virtual arcade machine so it kind of stands to reason why they, they would want to have more than one person sign in and maybe Maybe that second person can use their My Nintendo account and sign in and you know leverage their licenses, unlock certain things within the games, have more characters, like if there's a new Smash game coming out. Maybe that we could have two My Nintendo accounts, one guy unlocks his DLC characters, and you know, you could play with two different My Nintendo accounts. But the UI is pretty much pretty much everything we knew these these icons are the same the background is different but again I think that is something that happens when you put it in suspend mode suspend the game but if you take a look at the switch take a look at it it's black now this leads me to believe I was curious because uh, Mohang actually put out a tweet which you'll see in a minute of a black Nintendo switch is this the Nintendo switch dev kit because these publishers are posting out these pictures of this black switch I'm thinking this is the dev kit. This could be the dev kit. If it is the dev kit, I wonder what the dock looks like. I wonder what that looks like, man. It's probably crazy. It might it might just be a normal normal switch, but uh, the Foxconn, a Foxconn worker, Foxconn is a facility that makes like, pretty much all the hardware that's ever made today. It's made at Foxconn. And Foxconn makes hardware, puts it together. They, they've made PS4s, they make Xboxes, they make computer chips, they put all this stuff together. They made the Nintendo Switch, and a Foxconn worker. This is way back when it was known as the NX, like just way back. You know, crazy rumors reporting everywhere. But I, we had actually reported on this at Tweak Town, and um, the Foxconn worker basically, hey, look, we have the Nintendo Switch on on the, uh, the the NX on our on our board right now. We're we're making the thing, and it has this crazy box attachment. It really, it has a GP106. Which is the NVIDIA, basically the GPU in the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060. And everyone's like, well, you know, that's where all the rumors came from. Oh, the Switch is going to be more powerful than a PS4, more powerful than the Xbox One. That, that's where all those rumors came from. That's pretty much where all that stuff came from. So when you hear that kind of stuff, you're like, okay, the Switch is going to be amazing. And when it ships, it comes with the Tegra. You know, it's not amazing with varying performance, tablet drops down to like 720p 
300 megahertz on the the processor on the gpu not anything like we were expecting from the foxconn worker but all that ties into is this the dev kit and if it is the dev kit what does the dock look like does the dock have all the crazy stuff that uh, the foxconn worker said it would does it have a gp 106 inside of it or is that going to be a separate device the supplemental computing device which i've actually covered before and I was predicting that um, NVIDIA could use their grid servers, the GeForce Now servers, to beam advanced GPU processing power through the cloud to the switch and basically unload this amazing performance on the switch while it's docked, of course. But that, that's a whole new thing. But this could be the, the switch dev kit. Um, we have change users. We have suspend mode, which is kind of obvious. We all knew we'd have suspend mode. And we have what appears to be what everyone's reporting as a custom theme. I don't think it's a custom theme. Now, if it is custom, it's probably because this black switch, the NX, or sorry, the dev kit. So that's probably why it's black. But I think more than likely it's black because of the suspend mode. So we'll take a look. Or I'll show you Mohang tweeted out a slimmer switch console we can just see here it's black it's it's not gray like the uh current system system that we'll all be buying well you don't have to buy the gray one you can buy the blue and you can buy the blue and uh red but uh, just i i don't think it looks very good on the switch like attached it's a little not good this is just mismatched and weird but that could be the dev kit and if that's the dev kit man what's the dock look like so let's go ahead and zoom along. I wanted to talk more about the battery life of the Nintendo Switch, what to expect from the internal battery, and go over with you what is inside of it and what kind of performance we'll get. So the Nintendo Switch tablet has a non-removable 4310 milliamp 3.7 lithium ion battery, 3.7 volt. Now that's not bad, but 4300 milliamps is not that good, especially for a dedicated game system, especially for a system that's meant, you know, for dedicated 720p, 30fps on the go play. And as a result, it's going to take a little bit to recharge it. Now, one of the major benefits everyone thought USB Type-C would offer is fast charging, quick charging. But the Switch is not really going to leverage quick charge over type c it's not going to utilize it and i think this is in part of the battery battery is probably a cheaper uh more dependable cell i think they're putting an emphasis on dependability rather than fast charging so as a result it's going to take about three hours to recharge a 4300 milliamp battery that's not bad but it's not good the capacity is not good we really you really want to be closer to like 5,000 milliamps for a dedicated system like this. I mean, it is a tablet. It is. It will have 10-point capacitive touch. It will have. It will power an NVIDIA Tegra. So, we we need a little bit more battery power. And a 3.7 volt lithium-ion battery. We don't know how many cells it is, and we can't really determine exactly like the exact uh, recharge wattage rate that kind of thing. But we do know how much. How, how many watts the AC adapter will shoot into the switch, which we'll go into here in a second. But I want to talk about what USB Type-C offers for all devices and the Nintendo Switch, provided the switch has the applicable, the applicable technology and hardware within it to accept and utilize this, this new technology. So all Type-C, all Type-C protocols, the, the actual the protocol itself and the cords it can transmit up to 100 watts of power with something called usb power delivery 2.0 now usb pd 2.0 that was something that's specifically designed to power devices it's it's one of the major boons of type c you could with a type c cord it'll transmit audio video data and power through the same cable that's that's amazing but power delivery 2.0 is really meant the 100 watts like only just because it can deliver 100 watts doesn't mean the nintendo switch is going to absorb 100 watts and that is with uh type c to type c that's that's really not something that we'll probably see with a ac adapter 
Now the type C to type C protocol will deliver a uh, DC current. It, it doesn't convert it to AC current as you would with the adapter. So it's really interesting to note that this thing can theoretically, because it uses type C, theoretically absorb up to 100 watts of power, but that 100 watts is designed more for laptops. So the switch isn't going to absorb, it's not going to utilize the full extent of type C. It's not going to have quick charge, it's not going to use Qualcomm's quick charge or any other. Um, a lot of OEMs, like Qualcomm for example, they utilize what's called quick charge technology over type C. Qualcomm has their own, it's called quick charge with Qualcomm. We, if you ever see quick and charge capitalized, that's Qualcomm. And quick charge 3.0, Qualcomm's uh, quick charge 3.0, charge stuff in like an hour and 30, 30 minutes really fast really fast but well, we're not going to see that with the nintendo switch and i think one of the main reasons with that is nintendo does not want people blowing up the switch they don't want the thing injecting too much power into it because we all know what happens when you inject too much power into a device that's not made to handle it so the battery itself the battery has to be First of all, it has to have the required technology inside of it, then it has to have that technology with the battery. So there's two things you really have to have in these, these kinds of systems. The Nintendo Switch probably will not have a special battery, and based on the three hour recharge rate, it does not support USB Type-C quick charge, and it will not leverage the full 100 watts of power, but most devices that use USB Type-C will not leverage that full stream of power with power delivery that's really not going to happen so let's go ahead and take a look at the dock now as we all know when the switch tablet is docked in it's cradled in the dock the dock has a male usb type c um, port which slots into the female usb type c port within the switch and that will transmit energy right to the switch. But here's the interesting thing about the dock. The dock is an adapter for power, and it's also an adapter for the video signals. So the actual conduit, the actual transfer of power from the dock to the switch is DC power. It can transfer up to 39 watts of DC power to the switch while it's docked. And I'm wondering, if Nintendo, when they say three hours, I don't believe they specified. I believe when they say three hours, they're talking about when it's docked. It takes three hours when it's docked because the AC adapter can actually transfer more power than the dock. But in any case, this is 39 watts of DC power being transferred from the dock's USB Type-C male port to the switch's USB Type-C female port. Interesting thing about the dock though, so when you take the AC adapter, plug it in the wall, then the AC adapter ends in a USB Type-C uh, socket in a, in, a, in a male port, and you plug that in to the dock, the dock's USB Type-C female port, hook it right up, then the wall, the, uh, the mains will transfer the power through that cord to the dock. And the dock will then convert that power, that AC power, to DC and transfer it to the switch itself. So we have an adapter within the dock. That's why the dock is such an important thing. But also the dock is extremely important for the video signals. That's what the video signal is basically being converted from a raw USB Type-C. And also, since it uses USB Type-C, that means we could use US um, DisplayPort over USB Type-C, which is amazing. That's amazing, if the Switch uses DisplayPort of USB Type-C, it will dramatically help the, the scaling of the visuals, of um, basically the resolution. So like, when you have USB uh, DisplayPort of USB Type-C, it streamlines the video signal, like dramatically. It, it, it scales it properly, so when you hook the Switch up to a 4K TV, it'll look fine if it uses this technology but what's happening is the switch is transmitting the video signal through the USB Type-C protocol in the dock then the dock is taking that video signal and like converting it and passing it through the HDMI out 
which is then convert you know passing the signal to your TV so that's why the dock is so important it's an adapter for power and it's an adapter for the um, the video signals but the, the dock also has USB ports these USB ports require you know that's going to be there's going to be power shooting out and that's all also comes from the mains also comes from the AC adapter so these these uh, USB ports will be shooting out power whatever devices are hooked up and it will also be shooting out power to the switch and the switch will be taking the power that the dock is shooting into it and spreading it across to the the attached joy cons if the joy cons are attached now that they, they don't have to be attached but if they are attached there will be a unification unified spread of this power that is being pulled by the switch through the dock that's why the dock is a hub it's it's very important it's a very important device and I'm wondering if the transfer rates at the recharge rates how affected they'll be while the switch is docked if we have three of all of the USB um, ports are, are populated like let's say we have phones or whatever hooked up all the time and then well let's let's say that we have a pro controller maybe we have two pro controllers attached the pro controller has a USB type C end on it but you can buy a cord USB type C to type A and then plug it into a USB 3.0 or 2.0 port and it will supply power so let's say we have all these things hooked up to it and we have the joy cons hooked up to the switch will it take longer to recharge the actual switch tablet than it would normally you know just socketing in the switch itself by itself so that's that's another interesting thing to note and I'm also wondering how the um, if it'll charge faster if you're not playing the switch while it's charging I would imagine so because it's not shooting the the video signals the uh, Tegra systems not being taxed and that's that's something we need to know and I, I would be really interested to find that out but let's take a look at the AC adapter now now the AC adapter based on the FCC filings that were published earlier I think in December late November early December the AC adapter output from the the dock to the actual handheld the transmission of power can be 5 volts to 15 volts at 2.6 amps which which uh, basically converts to 30 up to 39 watts power DC power now the AC adapter input when you hook the switch directly up to the AC adapter it can charge faster theoretically now we're not sure if it will it should but it can transfer anywhere from um, 100 watts to 240 watts basically you take the volts times amps then you get the watts now this is the AC current so it's it's a little bit a little bit different from the uh, the DC current that's going to be passed when the switch is docked like right to its dock but it can technically it can deliver up to 240 watts I don't that's not gonna happen deliver up to 100 watts the uh, USB power delivery 2.0 can can accept up to 100 watts of power it's not gonna accept that it's not it's not gonna hit that but I do think it will be it will charge faster when it's directly hooked up to the AC adapter to the wall I mean that's kind of it's a little bit obvious but it's something to note so Nintendo kind of kind of needs to talk about this I wonder what the recharge rate is specifically when you hook the, the switch in mobile mode or even tabletop mode with the actual uh, you need an accessory to do that because you can't hook hook the damn thing I mean the the kickstand it, it'll it'll be really weird like you have to play flat and it wouldn't work too well Th this needs to be a 90 degree hookup and because it it will it'll fall over when it's sitting up with the kickstand it'll fall over but I'm wondering what the recharge rates are like when you're hooking it to switch right up to the AC adapter what that's like so that's the, the AC, AC adapter uh, battery charging specs and I hadn't seen a lot of people really talk about that it's kind of interesting to note I would like to know the exact times let's go over the joy cons so Joy-Con is pretty impressive. It's a pretty, 
impressive piece of technology. I'm really impressed with the Joy-Cons. Now, these things can last 20 hours battery life, 20 hours together, you know, like, like a piece. And they can, I'm wondering if they can last a little bit less like if some games will use some games that are like are, are made to utilize certain features in the joy cons like arms or maybe like snipper clips or something like that I wonder if that will drain the the um the joy cons battery faster but the interesting thing about these 20 hours of battery life take 3. Point hours 3.5 hours to recharge they're only rechargeable through a, a rail system and I'm, I'm really curious what kind of batteries these Joy-Cons have. And I want to know exact specifications of that rail system. Because it's, it's a unique, really innovative design. But I would imagine the, uh, the, the battery power is like a drip feed. And I'm wondering how that, that power will actually affect the switch recharge. Like how that will work. But it can only be recharged with the rails, which means it can only be recharged with the Joy-Con grip or attached to the Switch handheld itself, the, the Joy-Con charging grip. So, it's really, really interesting to note. But the technology is pretty impressive on this hardware, I have to say that. Now let's take a look at the Pro Controller. Pro Controller is just as impressive. It has all the, the technology that's inside of the Joy-Cons. It's $80, which is insane like that's that's a uh, uh, almost what that's almost a third of what you're paying for the actual switch kind of ridiculous but it does have gyroscopic tracking it does have an accelerometer it does have the HD rumble technology so it is it's basically a a joy-con plus an old Wii U pro controller it's essentially what that is it takes 40 hours battery life which that's amazing in itself because I'm not sure how how long the actual Wii U Pro controller lasts. But I do not think it's it's 40 hours. That's really impressive. It takes three hours to recharge, and it recharges over USB Type C, which is also interesting to note. Which tells me that it's using a similar battery. It doesn't. It probably does not support quick charge. And I'm wondering what the included uh, USB Type C cord is. Does it end in a USB Type C, or does it end in a Type A, where you could hook up to an external power bank or something like that? But the technology in the Pro Controller and the Joy Cons really impressive technology. It's really interesting. But I would like to know like like detailed specifics on their internal batteries. But let's go back to the actual switch. Something important I want to note. Now the battery life, 2.5 to 6.5 hours battery life. 2.5 hours I think is, is the general life that we're going to get while taking it on the go. 6.5 hours is in sleep mode. That's, that's like no gameplay. That's obviously no gameplay. So, and Nintendo has said you can get about 3 hours of play while you're playing Zelda Breath of the Wild. Which is 900, or sorry, 720p 30fps on the tablet. And I think that's probably one of the most, if not the most, demanding games on the tablet, on the Switch. So, the most demanding game can give you about 3 hours of battery life playing this thing. Consecutive battery life. But I'm also curious if it will be lower than that. Because Nintendo has flat out said that you can expect it to be lower than, I mean 2.5 hours. You can expect it probably to be even lower than 2.5 hours. Because the actual device gameplay is varied on any device, especially on a console, especially on a, a handheld of this nature. Certain parts of the game will tax the system more than other parts. Like certain dungeons, certain areas, certain things, certain things that you do in the game will push the, the hardware a little bit harder than other other points. And I'm wondering if that would be true on the switch if unless the games are like 100 percent consistent which i don't think they will be especially it's a simple fact that the games have to be scaled to the games determine how long the battery life lasts 
the games determine how the CPU and GPU perform. So the games, and we all know games are not 100% consistent every moment. So the games will deliver, not only deliver differing performance because they control the CPU, GPU, and battery life, but because the games are not 100% consistent, different parts of the game will tax the system more than other parts. So I'm wondering if that, that estimate, 2.5 hours, 3 hours estimate, is a little bit a little bit more than what we'll actually get. Depending on the game, depending on certain things, depending on where you're at in the game. And I'm wondering if Skyrim, this, this is where I'm really worried about, is how long will Skyrim last? Skyrim is a pretty not hugely demanding but for a handheld for a, a nvidia tegra and there's another thing to keep in mind the switch uses a highly customized nvidia tegra it is not a one for one like chip in the shield tv it's not going to be the same chip you look at the shield tv you're like oh that thing does uh you know 1080p 60 fps it does 4k hdr why can't the switch do that because the switch is not 100 percent the same as the shield tv and the Shield TV leverages NVIDIA's GeForce Now servers and, a, and an um, NVIDIA desktop GP, or sorry, desktop GPU to hit those performance factors. Now, the Tegra is a potent chip, it is a powerful chip, but the Switch uses a scaled version. It's almost the same thing like the uh, PS4 Pro uses a highly customized Polaris chip, so you can't say, oh, PS4 uses RX 480. Why? Why isn't the PS4 hitting the same performance? Because it's a scaled chip. It's not the same damn thing, you know. So that's something else to to really worry about, or to to be concerned about, to be realistic about. Games like Skyrim will probably last two hours, if that, and maybe even less, depending on certain things. Especially if it's the Skyrim Special Edition, which. The, the lighting effects and the atmospheric fog will probably tax the taker pretty pretty hard so that's something else to remember you you really have to put this into perspective and that's really basically the whole purpose of this video to talk about the uh, the apparent dev kit and talk about the battery life and all these things that you should expect from the dock the switch the AC adapter now I would I want to know more about the performance values. I want to know if Eurogamer's um, what was it 768 megahertz while docked and 302 megahertz while on the go. I wonder if that's accurate, and I want to know, but I don't think we're gonna know that for a long time. Not unless Nvidia says something, because I don't think Nintendo is gonna say something. And if anyone were to say something, it'd be Nintendo's Japanese site. That's where I found all this information. Nintendo of America does not. They want to keep things vague, but. Nintendo Japan, they want to... It's really strange because Nintendo Japan usually is where the vagueness comes from. But just a few things. No quick charge, power delivery 2.0. Uh, we'll have articles in the description where you could read more about these things. Read more about what to expect from the Switch. Well, I'll put the article about the display port over Type-C. You guys can read that. Um, I think that this right here is just, I don't think it's a theme, I think it's just suspend mode. Multiple users is pretty big, but I don't think it's it's a theme. I don't think it's, and if it is a theme, why isn't it more dynamic? It needs to be, you know, where's Donkey, either it should be like Donkey Kong, Kirby flying around, Metroid, or sorry, Samus, show all kinds of stuff on there, and that's kind of a drab theme to have. But I hope that this has helped basically add perspective to what to expect from the switch's battery life what to expect from the the battery inside of it you know the kind of recharges that we'll have to do the the basically the handheld mode you know you want to travel with your your adapter at all times you know have your power bank and i wonder if nintendo will sell their own usb type c power banks because it can be a little dangerous hooking up a, a really shitty USB type cord or a shitty power bank, hooking anything up to something that's bad because it can transmit more power than the device is supposed to accept and it could just you know destroy it, completely like just harm it. But that's something that I wonder. And 
I hope that this video has helped put things into perspective for you. And uh, we'll have articles in the description. But keep a look out. We'll, we'll be doing more videos, more articles, more stuff like this. And um, we'll see you next time, guys.